Hey, 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 what's going on, Face Boxers? It's Will Vickers and Jimmy Dorsey here. Floyd Patterson's former sparring partner for a, for a period of seven years. Is that correct? That is correct, Will. Okay. That is correct, yes. Give us a bit of a, an inkling into your history of boxing. How did it all begin? Well, you know, I uh, was going to Allenville High School at the time, and uh, I think it was in the uh, ninth or tenth grade. I was uh, 16 years old, about to turn 17, and uh, I was on the JV football team. And, uh, and my mother, I came home from uh, the football practice, and my mother told me about Floyd Patterson having a camp, it was in the paper and she showed me the article and forget it, I, that I just, I went blank. I said, oh my God, I, I, I've got to, uh, uh, I always wanted the box, you know? So uh, we made an appointment to, uh, to see Floyd the following day. We drove 27 miles, which is one way, 27 miles to his gym. And uh, I met Floyd. Uh, I saw him boxing with uh, probably eight or nine different guys. And I said, wow, this is incredible. I'm going to get the opportunity to spar with uh, Floyd Patterson. You know, I'm thinking to myself, this, this is amazing. You know, uh, so right away I quit the uh, football team and I went with, uh, I started training at Floyd's camp. Was that, when you, I, sorry, was, that when you still, was that still when you were in high school? So you just graduated high school, sacked football off, and then decided to do boxing. Yes. Yes. At the time, I was not very disciplined. I'll be honest with you. It took me probably about three or four months. In fact, I recall Floyd even telling me, uh, maybe you should sweat a little bit, uh, you know, before you, you, you're not working out very hard. And I think uh, he said a, a couple of the, and next thing I knew, I was training harder than anyone in the gym. Um, I would, uh, during the summertime, I used to come to the uh, gym. I would weigh in at 167, 66, and I would weigh out 10, 9, 10 pounds lighter. And that's losing water weight, just the water. That's, that's how hard I used to train. And the thing was, um, my mother, she had told me that she was going to, she would uh, take me to the gym two or three times a week. After uh, we left there, she never took me one time. <laughs> and I, uh, ended up, I ended up hitchhiking uh, over that mountain. It was a brutal, brutal, especially during the winter time. It was brutally cold, you know, but I uh, started hitchhiking and that's, um, how I got to be known, you know, people would see me hitchhiking 27 miles one way. Back where, did, where did you live? Where did you live? And where is Floyd Patterson's gym based or was it based? Well, I lived in Ellenville, New York. Yeah. And uh, I hitchhiked down 209 to 4455 uh, to 299 right into New Paltz. And uh, I was doing this when I first started hitchhiking like six, seven days a week. I loved it. You know, what, it was incredible. What, 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 what made you want to go to the extremes, the sacrifice of wanting to travel that far though? I wanted to be good. I wanted to be uh, strong. I wanted to be conditioned. You know, the, the conditioning that I went through was amazing. You know, I, I used to train so hard to the point of utter exhaustion. You know, and when I think back, in a sense, uh, in a sense, that actually hurt me, you know, kind of burned me out. But uh, let me tell you, there was no one that trained as hard as I did in that gym. You know, uh, that's all I did. I was the first one in and the last one to leave every single day. You know, I would train for three hours, three hours constantly. What weight did what what weight what weight did you fight at? I was a middleweight, middleweight, and uh, I started off as a middleweight, and then after about three or four years, 
I moved into the uh, light heavyweight right. division. Yes. Well, Floyd Floyd Patterson was a heavyweight. So how did you find the weight difference when he he was seventeen years old and he was like forty something? How did you right. find that? He was he was he was uh, small as a uh, known as a heavyweight. He was very small. You know, he weighed when he used to fight. He weighed like uh, 188, 190, You know, uh, when he was uh, coming up in the pros, uh, it was amazing. Back in the fifties. 40s, 50s, uh, most of your heavyweights were like Rocky Marciano. He was like 185, 189. You know, <clears throat> fighters today, you know, the big heavyweights, they're like 220, 230, all the way up to 250, 260, you know. And uh, that's uh, one thing I uh, say is uh, the fighters of yesterday. Uh, they wouldn't be able to stay in the ring with the fighters of today. That's a totally different story. But. Ah, so you you think the fighters of today are more developed than the boxers of yesteryear? Well, it's not a question of developed. They're just stronger, you know, in why? boxing. Why, because, why, uh, why? Uh, they're, they're stronger. You know, they're, they're uh, I don't know, they're just bigger. You know, they're bigger than they... We're back in the uh, 50s, 60s. I mean, who'd you have? You had uh, Ezra Charles, Archie Moore, Rocky Marciano, um, yeah. Joey Maxim, uh, fight, uh, light heavyweight, fighting as a heavyweight, you know? Uh, and of course, Floyd Patterson, you know? Well, tell us about some of your mad stories tra- hitchhiking to the gym itself. Oh, it was crazy, man. The, the, the effort that it took, uh, I mean, uh, I was in, in the three years that I hitched hike over the mountain, I was in uh, three automobile accidents, one which could so easily have been fatal. You know, um, I, I got picked up by a couple of guys. They, uh, um, I got in the back, back of their car and uh, we started going over the mountain. Uh, this was on, was on the way home. It was about nine o'clock at night. And, uh, they were traveling very fast around the, the turns. And um, <clears throat> I told the guy, I told the guy, you better slow down. I know these roads very well. I hitchhike on them every night. And he said, oh, don't worry, man. Don't worry, I, I'm a good driver. And he punches it, man, the uh, gas pedal to the floor. And we're doing like uh, 75, 80 miles an hour in like a 45 mile an hour zone. You know, and there's there's turns. There was turns up ahead, and now he had a pile of clothes all the way up to the uh, ceiling. Mm. And uh, as we approached this curve, I knew there was going to be an accident. You know, because we were doing like easily eighty miles an hour, and the turn was coming, and I buried myself under the clothes. <laughs> Next thing you know, we're going sideways, and the car is jerking. Now. If we had gone off the side of the road, there was a railing there. It would have hit the railing, flipped, and went down an embankment about 40, 50 feet. I kept picturing what's what's death going to be like? Yeah. You know, uh, am I going to go unconscious right away? Am I? Is it going to hurt? I actually thought that. I that was the only time I actually thought I was going to die. You know, I really did. You what know, happened? And we, we ended up doing two complete turns and the vehicle came to a stop. I don't know how this guy handled the car. The God was on my side that night, you know, um, but we came to a stop. I got out of the car. He gets out of the car. He goes, man, I apologize. You're right, man. I'm going to slow down. And the tires were smoking. It was crazy. Man. What did what did you say to him? What did you say to him? Were you annoyed at him or? I was extremely annoyed. I wanted to deck <laughs> him. I wanted to deck him right there. He, yeah. he was with his friend there. I wanted to punch them both, you know, because they were both uh, laughing as they were, and I I think they were drinking. Yeah, they were probably drinking. So you didn't you know, find it funny. Yeah, yeah. It was another time where where I started walking. I used to get uh, caught on uh, 
it was where 299 meets 4455. And there's a restaurant right across the street. And uh, what I used to do was try to get there before they closed so I could stand on the corner and wait to go the 15 miles back, 15, 20 miles back to Ellenville. You know, I would just stand on the corner. And this restaurant closed every night at nine o'clock. And, uh, and I just happened to, uh, 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 I, I just happened to get, I was waiting there, waiting there, waiting, no rides, no rides. And uh, finally uh, I started walking. Yeah, that was the last time that I decided I would uh, walk, that I would walk and uh, whether, because it was pitch black. Yeah. I started walking up the mountain. I get up to the top of the mountain and I'm walking at a pretty fast clip, you know, and all of a sudden uh, I must have walked about four or five miles and uh, I was walking quick. All of a sudden there's someone from coming in the opposite direction. First of all, you couldn't see one foot in front of you. We uh, basically slammed heads. Both of us walked right into each other. And I jumped back, went into a boxing stance. I was going to start swinging. I didn't know what, <laughs> I didn't know what it was, you know, and it scared the hell out of me, you know. And uh, he, uh, the guy that I hit was a, uh, uh, a young guy, uh, I don't know, 20, 20 years old. He says, oh, oh, hold on, man, hold on. I'm just trying to get the new pulse. And I said, I'm trying to get the Ellenville. <laughs> oh. And we went on our way, and uh, but, but that was so, so comical. It sounds you know, that... So when you finally got to the gym at the age of 17, Floyd Patterson's gym, how long did it before you got your first fight? What, what, what was the process? What was the process? I probably uh, trained maybe uh, probably about six months, five months, something like that. And my first fight was uh, against a kid named Joe Willingham. Uh, I was in the town of the uh, city of Poughkeepsie. Yeah. And I knocked him out in the first round. No you know? way. So in fact, my first uh, four fights were knockouts, uh, KOs. Then I fought in the Golden Gloves. I uh, won my first one. But then I lost my second fight, which is uh, it's crazy because I should have uh, had I fought the way I should have fought or would have fought, I would have won. What happened was the week before I saw this guy fight, the guy that I, I was matched against the following week, um, uh, his name was Eddie Edward Pagan. And I was intimidated. I, this guy could throw hooks, and and we didn't even know, learn how to throw hooks yet. And he was throwing body punches. And um, here I'm in the sub novice division of the uh, the Golden Gloves, and uh, I'm saying this guy sh should be in the open class. You know. But anyway, um, after I saw him fight, there was about twenty other guys in my uh, in my uh, in the uh, uh, that, that that was uh, I could have been matched against. Wouldn't you know it? The following week, Jimmy Dorsey, Eddie Edward Pagan, you're uh -huh. fighting Pagan, and uh, I lost the fight. Out of uh, he caught me with a few good shots, but I could have won. I was intimidated, and that was the last fight that I was intimidated. After that fight, uh, I after that fight I went out every other fight. And I said, I'm not going to lose like that again. You know, okay. I'm just going to, you know. And that's uh, what happened there. But With sparring Floyd Patterson, have you got any footage that you'd like to show us? Uh, yes, I do. Actually, uh, I think we do. i got some. Uh, could you, uh, could you give us a bit of a quick there. intro? So was how far into your amateur career is this? What's that? How far into your amateur career is this when you're fighting Floyd? Give the audience. A bit. Let me see. Okay. Uh, Floyd and I boxing right here. Right here, mm -hmm. I'm about uh, 17. It's probably about a year into uh, my boxing. My brother Billy videotaped that. Um, 
he was home on leave from the army and, uh, and he uh, videotaped. He had the wherewithal to uh, think, hey, maybe I should videotape this. And out of all the guys that trained in or probably well over a thousand kids, I'm the only one that ever got video of, of, of uh, myself sparring with him. Beautiful. And none of the fighters got, ever got any video. At least I have never seen any. Oh. Was Floyd oh. Patterson in your corner in the fight? And what was it like sparring Floyd? Oh, it was great sparring with him. He used to go uh, you know, one after another with us. Wow, oh, yeah. Oh, good. Thank uh, you. Go on. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. You should have just let it play. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um, sparring with Floyd was great. You know, uh, um, just uh, knowing that he had all that experience, you know, knowing that he fought Muhammad Ali and and all these uh, great fighters. Sonny Liston. Was... Oh, no, no. Sonny Liston. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, that was a fight he shouldn't have. Taken. Did you did you hold your own with Floyd though? What was it like? So the weight difference, but you said he was a bit lighter. Like. Yeah, he uh, he uh, used to wail on us pretty good, you know. He, he I got used, to throw, some, he used wait, wait. to throw some combinations on us that you know, uh, quite a few times he left me uh, buzzing. <laughs> oh, well, I, I asked this to the other lads though. When you're in sparring. Do you go at it full full pelt like you're in a live fight, or do you take it? Do you, do you lay back? Well, a bit? I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. You're not supposed to, but we yeah. did. We always did. You know, it was always, you know, uh, you know, because it's hard to learn when you're going all out. You know, you're you're not supposed to. Right. You know, it, probably that was one of my uh, reasons why I injured myself on, on occasion. You know, uh, takes a lot out of you. You know, uh, when you when you're uh, sparring, we sparred with. Uh, yeah, there's one of the fights uh, that I had at the. Uh, Brilliant. SF Thank you, Lisa. Welcome. That's the New York City uh, Golden Gloves. That was against uh, Paul uh, Cristiani. He was a West Point cadet. Right. And a lot of people thought I won the fight. But uh, it was close. I mean, we stood toe to toe and we went three rounds yeah. and uh, it was uh, three br brutal rounds. That was actually put on HBO, uh, that fight, which HBO originally was uh, MSG also, Madison Square Garden Productions. And uh, yeah, yeah, there's me and Floyd. I don't know if you could see that. Can I can I can just just yet yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's the knee and New York City Golden Gloves also. All these pictures taken off of uh, from the uh, daily news, you know. But uh some of the memories, man, were was crazy, man. That uh, the things that happened over the years. Uh, I can't see that. Yeah, rarely did we uh, ever wear headgear at Floyd's gym. You know, strange as it may seem, you know, you would think. Uh, as I recall, no one ever got cut um, or hurt bad. You when know, you were sparring, yet, though, would you concentrate on body shots or is it head shots or is it no old spar? It depends on what kind of style you had. And I had a style that uh, had Irish a, slugger. Uh, uh, I had a style that uh, uh, that was aggressive, and I used to like to go to the body. You yeah. know, I used to, because mainly for one reason, if I'm fighting a puncher, I, I go out there, I hit him with a headshot, I hurt him for about 10, 15, 20 seconds, that's it, he comes back, he's just as strong. I go out there, whack him to the body, it slows him down a tiny bit. And he doesn't all of a sudden he doesn't uh, he does not punch his heart, you know. So I uh, basically that was my uh, 
Technique. That was my goal was to get my puncher or get get my uh, opponent, get my opponent to not hit so hard. Whenever I have fought someone that, uh, whenever I fought someone that um, could punch, I would go right downstairs, and that made a big difference. It was one of the uh, Golden Glove pitchers, also. Who was that against? Uh, that was a kid named George Smith, uh, Gregory, Gregory Smith. That Did was you win that fight? Uh, yes, that was the quarterfinals of the 160 Open Class. Uh, I believe the 77th Golden Gloves. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> but um, great memories back then. You know what? A surprise uh, fighter. What would you say your greatest accomplishment was? If you're looking back in time, what's what's your what's your piece de resistance? Well, you know, it's uh, probably there was no uh, real great moments. Uh, the, the, the one thing I do regret was not getting to the finals of the New York City Golden Gloves. Uh, I won the Adirondack Golden Gloves twice. Um, uh, uh, I guess uh, between that and uh, uh, getting to the semifinals of the 160 open class uh, golden gloves. Let me see. No, they don't want to see that's there's Dorsey KO's Marts. That was uh, round that two. Was, yeah, that's uh, that was in the uh, that was in the quarterfinals of the golden gloves also. The following year, and a kid I fought was tough, and we went three hard, uh, two hard rounds until I knocked him out. What you happened know, but, in that? Sorry, what happened in that fight when it was big tree full hard? He was massive, and he just knocked him out and went down. That's great. That is. Uh, I wish I yeah yeah. Bring, can you bring that up, please? Uh, that uh, the one with the. Uh, the big tall guy I fought. See if you could. Alan Jimmy Daniel. Dorsey, boxer fighter. It's in black and white. Right, well, the was only. Big, it was like David and Goliath. Yeah, he was uh, like six foot six. The funny thing is, uh, uh, six months later, he won the New York Golden Gloves in the light heavyweight division, and I was fighting Paul Cristiani in the middleweight division, yeah. and I lost a decision. He knocked out the West Point cadet. Uh, Bob Jones, I believe, knocked him out. And uh, in fact, I saw him fight at the finals in the Golden Gloves and uh, Bob Jones. Okay. Uh, it wouldn't be on there if you put, just look for the black and white. Um, but I, uh, I would have to, uh, going back, going back, you know, I think back to those uh, times, it was just, uh, Amazing, amazing. Brilliant. What about your fight with Alex Ramos? Ramos, how did that? The Bronx Bomber. Tell us about that one. Oh, Alex and I, yeah, we fought each other. I had shoulder issues. Right. I had uh, rotator cuff problems, which um, it was my first fight after the Cristiani fight. Alex and I fought. It was at the... Uh, um, Roberto Clemente Coliseum yeah. um, in, in the Bronx. And uh, I lost a decision. I just, the punches were coming out slow. I was, I was off. I just couldn't uh, get my shots together. Right. And I regret that. I, I tried to get another match with him when he came. Actually, I fought a guy that he fought, Pablo de Jesus, who knocked Alex out stopped Alex and I fought uh, Pablo de Jesus but my shoulder was better and I beat him. Right. I, I didn't stop him but I did beat him. Did you ever get knocked out? No. no I didn't I think so. Yeah, I know but you got the jaw. I got a strong chin. Your, yeah, your, your, strong. Jaw, your jaw is pure Americana. Probably got a few brain cells missing but uh, you've got the jaw. That, hey what do you think of my jaw? <laughs> I I think you've got a 10 out of 10. I think mine's a 7. Anyway, keep going. Sorry, I'm listening. You know, uh, uh, 
I could uh, go on and on and on about uh, a lot of the fights, uh, the memories. Uh, um, one time they matched me with a listen to this. They matched me with, uh, we went, we drove up to uh, Niagara Falls and it's 350 miles. Yeah. And uh, they had no one for me to fight there. I weighed, and I was coming in about, I was a light heavyweight, about 170, 72. And the only guy they had for me was a guy who weighed 238 pounds. Now, this was known as a smoker fight. A smoker fight is uh, non-AU registered. It's just a fight that um, some fellas uh, that they put together themselves called some boxing teams, you know, boxing uh, clubs to come out to the fights and we'd get your fighter a match, but it wasn't AU registered. So, you know, they, they were matching a anyone up. But anyway, they matched me with this guy, um, Alexander the Great, he was known as. Alexander the Great. I, so uh, um, the guy weighs, weighed in at uh, 238 pounds, and I'm looking at him. The only reason why I fought him was under the pretenses that he was supposed to have had no amateur fights. He had like one, maybe two amateur fights under his belt. So uh, they, they call us into the ring. I'm waiting in the ring for him. And uh, there, there must have been about maybe 1,500 to 2,000 people in attendance watching. And uh, I'm waiting for him to get in the ring. He comes out of the dressing room. He's got a robe on. It's old beat up robe, all ripped and torn. It says Alexander the Great on it. Now, how many fighters do you know that never had an amateur fight? Has an old worn out robe that says Alexander the Great. He steps in the ring, starts shadow boxing. And right away I knew I was in for a long night. But uh, we actually had a very good fight. I was the aggressor and I got decked twice and the, uh, once in the first and, uh, and once in the uh, third round, third round. And, uh, and that's when they stopped the fight because my eye was completely shut. I never got knocked out. I jumped right back up after I got, uh, after I got, after I got knocked down. But we found that big tall guy. Uh, you want to see this here? You get a go kick out of it. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Wait a second. Let me see. There it is. There it is. Watch it. It lasted about 20 more seconds. Can you see it, Will? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ouch. <laughs> oh, good Earl. You did him some he damage, was, Jimmy. He was out for here's another uh, video of it. We're going to show it again. Yeah. Okay. Replay. Replay. Yeah. Finish. He, was down, he was down for about five minutes. I was concerned, you know. If I, I mean, if I had heard it, I don't think I would have continued boxing if I had hurt him seriously. You know, I honestly don't think I would have, you know, uh, continued uh, boxing. But uh, luckily he got back up. What? Luckily he got back up and everything was uh, fine. And he actually fought in the New York City Golden Gloves where he went to the final, won the championship and he knocked out a West Point cadet no way. Uh, named Bob Jones. And uh... Jimmy, I'll tell us yes. about surviving COVID. Oh, I caught a very good, bad variant of uh, COVID-19. I was on the uh, ECMO machine for, uh, what, 18, uh, three weeks? Um, ECMO for three weeks, life support for three Life weeks. support for uh, a month. Uh, a month and a half, something like that. 
and uh, I, I thank God I survived it. You know, and I, the only reason why I survived it was my condition, was my conditioning. It, uh, you know, I was able to pull through. True survivor. Uh, yeah. Hold on, Tom, hold on there. Um, but uh, it was it was crazy. One second I'm walking down my sidewalk. And next thing you know, they're, they're, I'm in the hospital and uh, on a ventilator. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. You started having trouble breathing and uh, at home here. And it was amazing how fast it came on to me. And uh, for a while, they didn't think I was going to come out of the hospital, you know, or, I just thank uh, God that uh, I pulled through. Yeah. Good. We're all happy. I know. Uh, you're still here rocking and rolling to tell the tale. What you got? What's that, Vic? Or we're, we're, we're happy you're still here to tell the tale. I'm sorry? We're happy you're still here to tell the tale. He's, still, he's happy you're still here to tell the tale. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Wait. Thank you. What's that? Tell them what. Lisa has something. I don't know what she wants to say. Show. Let's one second. One second. Can this be edited? It, it can. Oh, <laughs> God. What are you watching? Wait. Wait for what? Oh. battles in the ring is now going round against the Oh, that was the news clipping. Love becomes a champion over COVID-19. Senator Robin Simmons with the exclusive. Heartbreaking. To see someone so strong for so long succumb to such an illness. James Dorsey was once a two-time Golden Gloves boxing champion, one-time middleweight and light heavyweight contender. He had 20 professional fights and once sparred with Floyd Patterson, a two-time heavyweight champ. Dorsey's latest fight isn't inside the ring, but in a hospital bed. On July 22nd, he was diagnosed with COVID-19. Never did I think he would be stricken down with something of this nature, not that it couldn't happen to anyone, but someone of his strength and endurance and can do will to mentality I, and, and health conscientious lifestyle, I would have never bet a dollar on the fact that he would have been so sick. The 62 year old showing he is still a fighter. He's showing good promise. He's uh, required a artificial lung machine, which we call the ECMO uh, for uh, close to 18 days. And uh, yet we were able to successfully disconnect him and he's breathing on his own with the help of a ventilator still. This was Dorsey just two months ago, hitting the heavy bag outside his Oakland Park home in June. He was whacking the bag in our backyard and doing road work. And it just came on. Stiffness in his neck. The breathing started being labored and a fever out of nowhere. For Dorsey's wife, Lisa, it's a day-by-day -day existence filled with prayer and the help of former opponents. Bobby Chez, you name it, Dickie Woods, all of them. He's fought Tony Tucker. So many great people have reached out. The Muhammad Ali family, who's very close with us. Medical professionals doing whatever they can to help Dorsey fight the most important battle of his life, the fight for his life. And I just tell him to keep fighting and he won't be able to talk to me for a while. But not to give up. Robin Simmons, 7 News. There you go. Thank you what very do you think, much Will? Sharing. Thank you very much for sharing. It's very heartfelt. And like I said before, yeah. I'm happy you're here. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, mate, I was engrossed in that myself. But if we're moving on from the COVID-19 thing now, how are you yes. affiliated with um, Muhammad Ali's grandson and the family themselves? And then tell them about, tell the audience about supporting you uh, after. Yeah, we're, we're uh, good friends with them. They, they, we met them at uh, a place that we uh, go to on occasion for entertainment. Uh, about 10 years ago. We yeah. just had her birthday party Saturday night. Yeah, we just had her uh, birthday party Saturday night. Happy we, birthday. Uh, Khalil Ali. That was Khalila's happy Muhammad birthday. Ali and Muhammad Ali Jr. was there. May May. And May May and uh, 
It was it was it was awesome. Tell She's such a terrific woman. Tell everybody about the when you, when you came out in your wheelchair. Tell everyone about the the reception that you received. Oh, oh he uh, actually uh, he uh, I got an unexpected phone call from uh, Muhammad Ali himself. I was I was at my uh, what was at the fiftieth or no that was your sixtieth. No, when is he? No, it's it like 57, 58th birthday. Um, and they, they gave me the phone and I spoke with uh, Muhammad Ali for, uh, for about three or four minutes. He was, at the time, he was going through, uh, sometimes he would have bad days, sometimes he would have great days. Um, this particular day, he was, he was awesome. He was beautiful. He, he was actually, you know, he was a little bit, a uh, little bit off, uh, you know. And he said, "How you doing, Jimmy? I heard you're a good fighter, you know." And I told him that I went, I saw him fight, uh, I saw him fight Ernie Shavers at the Garden ringside, and when he walked by me, I was uh, uh, at ringside, standing up. The gate is there that separates the people that are watching from the fighters coming down into the ring. And I grabbed him on the left side of his shoulder and gave him a pat, you know, and that, uh, that, was, uh, that was a thrill for me to be able to touch Muhammad Ali. Amazing, yeah. absolutely yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I mean, that, that really was something. I was sitting next to Chris Christopherson. Uh, uh, he was like four seats over. And three seats in the back. Um, there were all kinds of celebrities there. It's pretty amazing. What do you got? What we got? What we got? What we got? Yeah. What is it? This is the day we got out in Russia. Oh, there's. Station with a former boxer who went to recovery, battling back from COVID 19. He was in the fight of his life against the virus. But in the end, he won. Simmons win Martinez is live at the news desk with this exclusive win. Well, former boxer James Dorsey headed home from the hospital after winning the biggest title of all, Survivor. It's the kind of fanfare that you would usually see for a boxer heading into the ring. But for James Dorsey, it's a very special celebration as he leaves Holy Cross Hospital having defeated COVID-19. Second, I'm walking down my sidewalk. Next second, they're waking me up three months later in the hospital. I had no idea what happened. Heard right, the former two-time Golden Gloves winner didn't know what hit him when he was knocked down by the virus. That's it. I think, yeah. Jimmy, I think it shows how much of a quality guy you are. The fact that What's that? It shows how much of a quality guy you are, considering the amount of people who cared for you. I think that that's a big. Deal. Oh, it's an amazing, an amazing response. You love, yeah, totally you love, unexpected. You you love you know, Jimmy. You love Jimmy, and a lot of people are happy that you're here. Yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I know you're a, you're a good friend of mine. Right, we're moving on now. I've got rock and roll. Tell us, can you tell us, go into your bouncing days, like after you'd finished your amateur career? Are we not allowed to talk about that or not? No, absolutely. absolutely. Tell, tell us about debt collecting. Uh, I, I did a, that with a couple of friends of mine also. That got me in trouble a few times, yeah. you know. But uh, as far as the, uh, the bouncing, uh, a friend of mine, John Graffio, up in upstate New York, he ran, owned a bar called the Shamrock. Yeah. And uh, he always told me, Jim, if you ever stop boxing and you'd like to, uh, you'd like to work the bar uh, for me, you know, uh, I'll pay you, work the door, you come in, you know, you make a good, you know, I was making the $7,500 a night. I don't know, you know, back in those days, there's a lot, yeah. you know. Um, back in the uh, early 80s, or actually uh, probably about 84, 85, that was. But uh, um, there were quite a few times where um, 
I didn't want to, but I had to use my hands. Tell, tell us about when you smashed like six of the guys. And I remember you telling me your punches came out so fluently. You're looking after your friend. Well, that, that was at a different bar. I was right. at, uh, I was with my uh, ex uh, girlfriend at the bar and she, uh, she came into the bar to, to uh, begin her shift. And she was hysterical telling me it was like nine o'clock at night, hysterical that, uh, and telling me that Bobby Brown w was getting the hell beat out of him out in the parking lot by three or four guys. And uh, I ran outside and I saw a few of his bouncers there. They weren't doing anything. And unfortunately they had Bobby on the ground and they were pounding. Yeah. You know, I guess when your adrenaline's flowing, the punches come out smooth because I had been back in training for about four or five months. And I had been sparring, but it just wasn't there, Will. You know, I just wasn't able to put the combination. That night, the combinations came out beautiful. You know, oh, I'm loving times. this. You know, the combinations come out. One would drop, and uh, I put my foot on his back, and I'm saying, who's next? And they're coming out oh. one after another. This is my favorite yeah. story. It was crazy. It was a crazy night, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, one guy came up behind me and broke a chair across my back. And I turned around and looked at him, and the guy bolted. And he took off <laughs> like, you know. You know I, he, the, the next day, I was black and blue from the top of my neck all the way down to the bottom of black and blue from well, that it was, chair. It was a selfless act though, going to save your friend, complete loyalty for your friend. I would have done anything for Bobby back then. Yeah. You know, Bobby and I were good good friends, you know, and uh, he always supported me when I was boxing right. and coming out. He was a waiter at the uh, Neville Hotel where I also worked there at the time I was a bellhop, you know, and uh, those are some terrific years coming up uh, at the uh, Neville Hotel. All right, well, tell, tell us about when you went debt collecting, because I remember you were telling me about that. You had to go around that guy's house. Yeah, uh, that, I, the guy, he, he, he didn't want to pay. You know, I, who was it? I did that with. Uh, oh, God. I'm trying to. Kevin Trevone. Kevin Trevone, yeah. I saw so I brought a, a friend of mine with me to uh, a big guy, the guy about six foot four, 260 pounds, but cannot fight his way out of a paper bag. He's a big guy, but he's, he's not- menacing. There. He's, he's there for the yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah, we got to the, the, it wasn't really a debt collecting thing. It was more to boot the guy out of uh, the person that was paying me her office. She was in business with him. He was stealing off her. Right. Come to find out, she found out, and and uh, I was given his uh, his. Uh, I was told to come to her place. There, she he had the door locked and everything. We actually had a uh, we had a uh, a locksmith come to the uh, building and uh, drill the lock out. And we went inside and uh, I saw the guy behind the desk and I ran at the guy. We threw him up against the wall. His feet were up in the air and, you know, and yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I think back on it, the thing was he had called the police, police uh, like 30 seconds before we were able to get inside. And the police called back and they said, do you still want us there? Is there a problem there? And he yelled, yes, I'm being assaulted. So next thing you know, the place was uh, covered with crawling with cops, you know, but uh, it all worked out for the better. Right. I got paid my money and. Uh, so if, Jimmy, is there anything else that you'd like to add for the interview? Because we've been going on for about an hour now. Is there anything else you want to cap off? 
Gosh, if if there is, I forgot it, man. Uh, you know, got, there was got, no... got, 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 got Lisa in. Got Lisa to say hello and your parents. Say hello, Lisa. Hello, everyone. Hello, it's a hey, pleasure Lisa. to see you all. Hey, Will, so good to see you. He's yeah. the champ. He's the champ. He's the champion of people. That's who's the champion of. He's the champion of people. Everybody loves him. Agreed. Oh. Is there anything else you want to cut the interview off with, Jimmy? I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I mean, yeah. You can edit a few of those things, right? You can... Yeah, no problem. Uh, but I thank you very much, Will. I thank of you course, so much of course. for doing it. time, any place, anything for you, Jimmy. I love the uh, background there. Uh, if it was real. Tell him Mate, next time. <laughs> you don't want to see my flat. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to right. thank you. For, I hope you enjoyed everybody. Faceboxers, share, love, like, subscribe, and everyone get on Jimmy Dorsey's adventure, his history, and the historical perspective that we've just shown.